video. Close screen. And we're on. All right, Mesa. Yes. All right, thanks for coming, Mesa. Who are you? Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Yes, <laughs> well, I don't know when I saw you last. Wow. I feel like it was at Dooley's a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, it must have been. It was a at few. At least 14 few. years ago. Yeah, maybe. yeah, something like that. <laughs> 14 years flies just like that. They told us it would, but we never yeah. listened, right? Yeah. Because it was definitely before I was dating Jace, so yeah. at least 14 years ago. Wow. <laughs> wow, time flies. Yeah. So let's catch up. Okay. <laughs> so what have you been up to? Um, so basically... Um, curiosity yeah. so I'm curious about pretty much a, a lot of things okay. and uh, one of the things that kind of captivated my curiosity is a few a few years ago mm -hmm. we just started chatting again on Facebook kind of catching mm -hmm. up and then you you presented me with the dirty love or the season one I guess uh, yeah so we just wrapped that up this year okay perfect yeah so I was watching that mm -hmm. and you know like it, there, there's something cool about watching mm -hmm. somebody on screen <laughs> that you know that's always cool but that always made me curious as well because you know we're here in Ottawa yeah. um, I don't know what the scenes like here in Ottawa mm -hmm. so I figured I'd get catch up with you and see if we can yeah. chat about this and okay. see, see what's going on in Ottawa uh, so first let, let's start with your story how did you get involved in let's say in, in the acting, acting. okay right. so um, I have always been uh, either a singer or actor I started singing I think when I was like in grade three um, I just little things at school and then um, I'm doing like little plays and I, so I've always really liked that and then in grade six I really got into acting uh, when I did a play um, and then I just got the acting but I've always kind of wanted to be an actor after that and uh, I did it all throughout high school as you yeah. remember yeah. I did all the drama classes the French media classes and then um, I moved to Montreal I did theater actually I did fashion design my first year but then I quit that and I went to uh, theater um, and film and, uh, and then I moved back to Ottawa, but I've always wanted to be an actor and it was always like my pursuit was to be uh, a working actor. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so that's, that's my story of how I started. I don't know. It's always been a passion of mine. It's always like I can't see myself living without something creative in that, in that field. Having something creative to do with your life. Yeah. It's like something out of the box, out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Right now you're doing it, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, part-time? Yeah, like, but it almost feels full-time. Yeah. <laughs> like, because, I, I mean, even though I have a full-time government job, I'm still doing this almost full-time yeah. on the side. Well, it must, because when you th take a look, like, let's say for Dirty Love, yeah. for example, like, uh, how long are the episodes? Um, so my first two episodes are about 20 minutes, and then they kind of come down to, like, 15 and, like, 9, 10. So there are eight episodes in total. So, yeah. like, a 20-minute episode. Yeah. How long does that take to, to well, film and edit and put it all together? Well, what I did for this was... So, Dirty Love. We'll talk about Dirty Love. So, Dirty Love um, is a passion project of mine. I wrote it, um, and I created it with a friend of mine. Uh, it was an idea that I had. I approached him with it, and he really consulted with on it with me um, and helped me develop the characters, and I go back, I write, and we talk a bit about it. And um, it took us... It took me, like, a year to write it, like, on and off, like, yeah. you know, back and forth. Um, and then... Um, oh my God. We had to film because everybody on set was volunteer. Like everybody okay. volunteered their time because it, uh, to make a production the size that I made is about a hundred thousand okay. dollars minimum, like independent. Yeah. Okay. So um, you know, paying everything at base, very low scale, it would have been about a hundred thousand dollars. So everybody volunteered their time. Um, I, you know, you have to feed everybody. So like that's I, I put money into it. Yeah. I put about like five thousand dollars in my equipment and food and rentals and everything we needed, um, and. Um, and so I had to film out of, um, out of, uh, like, like they weren't, like I wasn't filming per episode. I was just okay. filming per availability. Oh, okay, okay. And so you we were filming it together at the end. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we were filming different episodes, different scenes, like. So, oh, that's place available. We're going to film that scene. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. So, we, and like whoever's available, because I had actors like leaving like the country and, you know, people weren't working. And okay. so it was really trying to fit everyone's schedule yeah. and over the whole course of filming and pre-production post-production we had about 50 cast and crew in total yeah, so yeah. it was it was a lot of you know volunteers and passionate people like I was really really very lucky to have all these people volunteer their time yeah um, but in the end we had 12 filming days okay and I crammed those days as much as yeah, much as we possibly yeah. could um, yeah. without overworking anybody um, and we filmed on evenings and weekends yeah so it was it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so from like pre-production to post-production it was all like 
we we pushed the post production like we like a to the maximum that I possibly could. Like it probably should have taken more time, but um, I mean, we started filming in October of last year, and then we finished filming in January, and then we released in May. Okay, so that's pretty quick for a turnaround, too. Anyway. Yeah. And that was one full, like, is that the first season? That was the first season. First season. Yeah, yeah. Now you're on to say season two. No, well, we're, we're thinking about season two. Oh, okay. Like, we're, we're, we're talking about it, we have ideas, and we're just kind of taking a break, so, you know, it was, um, you know, I'm still pushing it out, like, for the first season, signing yeah. festivals, and kind of back and forth, and, and trying to revive, like, the viewership yeah, that's of right. it, you know, and I'm working on there. other things, yeah. So I'm, I'm taking a dirty love break, because it was yeah. my whole life for a while <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I'm taking a break and you know I, I don't want to do it again without funding yeah so well it's because it takes a lot of your time and like you said it, yeah. if you want to do this professionally at some point well yeah and you know, know you, I, I want to pay you know the actors and the crew and everybody for their time you know a lot of people just don't can, they don't pay for art and a lot of yeah. people don't fund it and you're like but you you live art every day you know you watch tv you watch movies you listen to music you listen to podcasts you listen you know you have art on your wall you you like so yeah we're so, like well, art is so underrated and, i and find that it, it's kind of an odd conundrum because it's yeah. it's under appreciated until okay. it's over appreciated yeah it seems like there's no middle, right? Yeah, and and especially in Canada, it's hard to get funding. So yeah. you know, the, everything is uh, government grants and, and certain like um, funding vessels, I guess. Mm -hmm. But so, but you're competing with so many people. Yeah, that's right. So that's why it's it's so hard. So I mean, right now, like, where we're, I'm still I'm taking a break for this series. I have another series in mind that I'm going to be going to look for funding. I have okay. a couple people on board to help me, like producers and stuff to help me do that. Okay. Um, that I already pitched to at a film festival a few weeks ago. And um, it like it seems like it's it's going to get picked oh, up good, hopefully. Good, good. Like I haven't written it out yet. It's yeah. ha I have the idea, I have the characters and I have all that. Okay. Um, and and so we'll see, but I'm you know with what I like to write, I like to write about Arab Canadians. Okay. Like myself, because yep. I want to relate to something. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people who can relate to me. So, um, and I don't see that on TV. No, that's true. So that's, true. that's what I read about. So. Yeah. yeah so, and in a comedic way, because the way Arabs are portrayed on TV right now or in film mm. is very negatively. So I'm trying yeah, to, yeah. you know, Makes show sense. us in a positive light and in a realistic light and. and and it's it's unfortunate because we went to high school together, yeah. and in the high school we went it was very very diverse. Yeah. And when you look at the diversity of our high school, I, I believe know. that was, and, and I know we, we always hear you know yeah. diversity is the strength and yeah. stuff like that, but you really got to live it to see it yeah, because absolutely. I've never felt or seen racism really mm -hmm. um, at our school. Well, I, you know, I'm a country boy coming yeah. from the country. I've seen a couple of instances. I had seen a couple instances, yeah. not with myself, like in high school, but other people yeah. and stuff. But, but uh, we, we were lucky to be that diverse in a certain diverse. way because Absolutely. anybody that has an open mind would yeah. come into that. Like yeah. I came into that environment yeah. with, oh my God, so much to learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and, and not, yeah. not that it was school. That but you know, to it's me funny because um, <laughs> it wasn't even just, you know, racial diversity. We were like... Uh, yeah, like the super rich people with the super like poor like yeah. we were really on the scale of we weren't just rich kids or poor kids or mm -hmm. whatever we really had a mix, a mix of, of social yeah. classes and uh, because of like looking at that big social yeah. mix if yeah. you will I didn't see anything that stood out more than if there wasn't that mix mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. I come from a school that is right in the country yeah. predominantly all yeah. little white kids and the bullying was there as well yeah. and this was there as well we just we didn't put the name to it so yeah. when, when we moved into high school mm -hmm. I didn't see anything that was extraordinary yeah. actually I have family that grew up in the country over here from and they're further in the country where they're very less diversified mm -hmm. and it sounded like he had a way worse experience their high school was way worse oh, wow. than ours for for bullying wow. and, and and gang versus gang and this was and, and I'm looking at it and I'm like how yeah no here we are we're very diverse yeah. if there's going to be gangs yeah. if there's going to be separation yeah. here's the model that there's going to be yeah and it wasn't and it wasn't like we had some gangs and some bad but it wasn't they weren't racially no. like against you know it was just yeah, there were idiots hanging together. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's what, what it was. was. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of idiots hanging together. <laughs> Very diversified <laughs> group of yeah. idiots hanging around together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
that's how it is. <laughs> but, but yeah, like that being said, I, I really yeah. appreciate when you when you say you bring that element to it. Yeah, and like Dirty Love is very very diverse. So you know you have an Arab Canadian you know Muslim who wants to sell like sex toys when she loses her job. Then you have you know two like LGBTQ characters um, and their storylines. And I had two very different LGBTQ characters. You know very yeah. you know um, I want to show the spectrum. I didn't want to stereotype. Um, and then um, I had like um, another friend who's in who's part of the cast, her Julie, who's you know a female, uh, a martial artist, you know. So like we're very very diverse yeah. uh, in casting. And I want to show that because like, my group of friends is diverse, so I yeah. want to show that that's your reality. reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Right. So and the reality is it's functional. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it's all with good intentions, it's very functional. Absolutely. You know, but it's the intention. I think mm -hmm. the intent is always the most mm -hmm. important part of what's going on, right? Yeah. So. Well, that's that's wonderful. I, like I said, I really like the, the portraying that. Mm -hmm. People can relate. It, it's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, people can catch on catch on to that. Um, and the Ottawa scene, like the yeah. scene in Ottawa for the f for filming and stuff yeah. like that. How's that coming along? So given the fact that we're a little smaller of a city. <laughs> well, so I mean, there's a couple different film scenes here in Ottawa. So you have um, the independent filmmaker scenes, which is I'm kind of part of the independent filmmaking scene, and then you have the Hollywood scene, which is more like Hallmark movies. Okay. So it's a lot of Hallmark movies. We also have like French productions mm -hmm. um, as well, but uh, predominantly um, Hallmark okay. is is dominating Ottawa. Do so you know why? Why why would they why so attracted to Ottawa for Hallmark? Almond. Almont really? looks like the little, t it's the town, oh, Carl okay. Kikulius, Almont yeah. has like the little Christmas town, you know, the main street where like the little Christmas shop, so that's, they love that kind of scene, okay. that's really what is, that's where they feel most of it, so, okay. um, that's why they love it, and, um, you know, there's tax credits here, you get major tax breaks, um, or tax credits when you, when you film, or when U.S. comes to film here, or even yeah. people here, they, they get a lot of their money back, money back, I guess, when they, when they film, so they get uh, a really good tax break, which is why more Hollywood films will eventually be coming to Ottawa. Yeah. Um, well, once we have sound stages, which we're supposed to happen in a couple of years, I don't know how that's happening, how that's going. Is it's that supposed a, to happen. Is that in collaboration with the city? Or no, or um, city, but no, there's a big company in Toronto okay. who's coming here to build, and okay. they have to work with the city because they want to build on um, NCC land. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so, at yeah. Woodbrook. And Hunt Club, I think, uh, area. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that area, so they're looking at building that. So when when they film in Ottawa right now, they film on location. So they have to film like in houses and on the streets and certain things. Whereas the sound stages will help them build sets and help them have green screens and all that. And so that's what Toronto has, that's what you know, uh, Montreal has. Um, and you know, Toronto has all these new studios as well. So Ottawa is eventually going to get that and we'll also we'll eventually have a bigger room in terms of more films other than just Hallmark. And that being said, like you said, Toronto and Montreal. So yeah. basically, mm -hmm. when we're when we're trying to grow this and get the sound stage yeah. and everything going, there's no, you're not really competing with these cities because we have something different to offer, anyways, right? Or is it going to be tough? It's going to be. We're still, I think we're still going to be competing, um, but we're not going to be. We're not as large as a city as you know Montreal, Toronto, um, and. I think we have a different kind of landscape to offer. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, um, but so I guess it depends on, on the films. You yeah. know, if you want like bigger city, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not right. gonna have like Toronto or Montreal. If you want like New York looking. Yeah. Um, right. But if you want something more like Washington or, or Boston, I think Ottawa is more of that style. Yeah, it could work that way. Absolutely. So, um, I think you know it's a matter of time before Ottawa booms in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the, a few more years. Um, the independent filmmaking is huge here as well. We have a huge independent filmmaking community. Um, we have great film festivals. I was running one for three years with other people. Um, I'm this last year was my last year. I'm moving on to another film festival soon, and um, there's there's so many. And we have a film festival called Digi Sixty, which really helps on professional development. So okay. um, they're twice a year, but they're they're fall festivals or big festival. I was on a panel this year for that, where I got to talk about producing um, on a independent level yeah um and i got to pitch a tv show or uh, to they gave they had a, a workshop that i got to be in for pitching or learning how to pitch okay. and i've never okay. pitched before in front of producers okay so you know you had five minutes to pitch your idea and so we had a, a one day with a teacher from algonquin she helped us like work on our pitch and then we pitched yeah. the next day so let's talk about pitching a little okay. bit <laughs> so when, when you talk about pitching an idea because yeah. i know some some viewers might be looking at this yeah. and go oh maybe i can do this and whatever yeah. and everything sounds nice until you actually did that it's so hard yeah yeah so how, how do you pitch an idea because you, you can't just 
it can't be a one sentence thing. Well, you know? sometimes it is yeah. because sometimes it really depends on who you're pitching to and where you're pitching. So, I mean, there's different festivals. Like, we were lucky we got five minutes to pitch at this festival. It's our okay. first time. But when you go to bigger festivals like Banff, they have two minutes to film uh, to pitch, oh, yeah. and you have a clock going, you know, and and they they want to hear your like log line. So you know you got to get to the point. You have to tell your whole story in two minutes. Yeah. How do you do that? You know. So you um, you leave out names. You, you gotta you gotta get right to the point. You gotta get to the point, but you have <coughs> to captivate them. It's gotta have a bang. Yeah, absolutely. One little idea spread in two minutes. It, it's it's gotta stand it out. Ha- it has to stand out. It has to stand out. And it's funny because also the Algonquin uh, teacher, she was great. She was telling us the story about how, like, these guys, um, I can't remember, I think they were from England, they were in, like, L.A. and they were trying to pitch. And, to, like, there were different story, stories and the producers are like, what else do you have? Like, I don't I don't like this. What else do you yeah. have? And they're like, oh, hold on. We're going, we forgot it in our car. We have something else. And they, like, ran to the bathroom. And they're like, okay, like, you know, what about that stupid idea that we had? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went back and they're like, okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger and what's his name? You know, they, they end up being twins. Was it Danny DeVito? Oh, they, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And they're twins long lost twins and they're like done it like that done that's it like that you know that was their pitch wow you know this meets this whatever and like they always want you to be like well this uh you know think of this film mixed with this film mixed with this film oh that makes sense that's kind of like how they, you, they can wrap it up in their head and yeah a little bit so oh, okay that makes sense. um but it's so nerve-wracking to pitch because you you want to get all the good stuff so it's like what yeah. details do you leave out and how do yeah. you and they want you to um to to kind of like personalize it like to yeah. you like why why should you be telling the story yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what does it mean to you because if it's a great story yeah we're gonna take it and tell it yeah it's a great story but yeah. we're not yeah. convinced on you right well, you, know? Know? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to like really sell it so pitching yeah. is really hard and it takes a lot of uh courage yeah, to pitch yeah, in front of these people sure. who like have lots of money or who yeah, are yeah. willing to help you get that money and yeah. and um and having to speak properly and not um the whole way through like yeah, I do all the time <laughs> like when I try to think of my words you know so um, what stuff for pitching or auditioning oh my god I think audition I don't know pitching only did once but auditioning I find is like my night like I hate auditioning even yeah. though it's part of the process and I have to do it and to get the job but I've like grown this fear like when I was 19 I could like audition no problem I was like auditioning in a bikini and I was like I could do this now that I'm in like you know my 30s I'm like so self-conscious like even just presenting myself in front of these casting directors, I'm just in my head all the time. It's so hard. Why do you think it's so hard? I don't know. I think I just want it so bad. And, and then I self-sabotage because then I'm like, well, what, I suck. I look at this person who's like, because you, you go and you see all these amazing actors who almost look like you. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, how? what am I going to do to stand out? Yeah. You, yeah, you got to be different. And then how, like, let's not forget my lines. Yeah. And yeah. let's just get through it. And so... It's just trying not to self sabotage. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> casting directors really want you to get the job. Yeah, so absolutely. They're not against you. No, no, no. It's they're just, just they're, they're picking from it's such a big pool. Right. They don't want it. All right. So you're you just know. you need to impress them enough that they want to show it to the producers, the directors who are yeah. not in the room. Yeah. So it's it's just self sabotage. <laughs> so I have to get over this like anxiety and fear that I've built up over the years. Because I think I've just been wanting this so bad for such a long time. Could it be because you know exactly who you are now? And you know what you're not willing, like not that you're not willing to do, but you know when you're a little younger, you're like, I'll do, I'll do whatever for success. <laughs> and now you're like, no, you know what? Well, if it doesn't tell my story, no, we're still like, <laughs> no, my agent would be like, go to the audition now. Oh, like, okay. you, know, you don't get a choice or anything. Do you know how many Syrian refugee auditions I've had this year? I've had so oh, many, really? so many, like Syrian refugee auditions. That's and you're typecast like, a little bit. Eh? Uh, everyone has a Syrian <laughs> refugee story lately, yeah. so it's it's a little typecast and. Um, you know, I've had, you know, sister of a terrorist auditions and wife of a terrorist mm. and they're like really so I'm it's pushing it. Well but yeah, it is a little bit because yeah. you know, like you don't want to represent your culture in that way. No. And the people writing these stories, you're like, who are writing these stories? Yeah. So And it's, you're so much more than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's yeah. So this year was all well, the best year in refugees and having to put on an accent. So I call my mom and say, Mom, can you say this? How do you say this? And she's like, I don't have an accent. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Stop it. Thank you. <laughs> so it's, uh, but, you know, I, I'm kind of like, this is why I create as well. Because if I sat around and waited for auditions, oh, yeah. I'd never work. Yeah. You know, because you're competing with so many people and so many fantastic actors. Um, so I just started creating. And I was like, well... I'm I'm not I'm, I'm Arab and I'm but I don't look fully Arab and I don't look fully white you know yeah. so I'm like oh like so I'm kind of in between sometimes and 
Um, sometimes people are more Arabic than me, so they'll yeah. get the role, right? Because my uh, Arabic's not up to par, but I'm not wide enough for certain roles. So <laughs> like, I'm so in between. So that's why I want to create and tell my own stories and, yeah. um, and do that, which is why I did Dirty Love, and um, which is why I'm creating this other show. And um, I just... I feel like you know if I if I don't create these opportunities for myself or for other people, I'm never gonna have my chance. That's right. You know, and, and you in this way you can yeah. control the narrative, Absolutely. especially yeah. if you get casted for your own yeah. script, right? Yeah. Then you control the narrative the entire way, yeah. and, and you can portray like yeah. you want. Yeah. Uh, especially like you said, your culture and everything you can yeah. portray it in, in, in a beautiful way, really. Yeah. Um, and it gives you more irons in the fire, right? Yeah. So you never know. Somebody, you, you'll yeah. get hired here, but they'll also mm -hmm. take that script. Right. And, uh, and I like doing more than just that. Like, I realize, you know, I don't, I'm not just an actor, you know. I am a director. I am a producer. I like that kind of, I like the mm -hmm. control of the set as well. You, you have know, the vision. I, yeah, I have the yeah. vision. I like the control. I like that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm not just an actor. I feel like I'm more than that. Yeah. I still have a hard time calling myself a writer, even though, like, I've written and I'm writing. Yeah. But I feel like that's where I'm, like... Not really a writer, <laughs> but it's, I guess uh, like it's called imposter syndrome, I guess. But uh, we all have it a little bit. I'm yeah. not a podcaster. I don't know what I'm doing. Here. There's a mic there and a camera yeah. there, but other than that, I'm just sitting here. But yeah, <laughs> I was like, you wrote, you've written something. You you made a you, I've made short I've made short films. You yeah, know, yeah, I've yeah. won awards. I'm like on the yeah. I'm like oh, I'm not a writer, but like I've written them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just maybe I feel like because other people are, you always feel like other people are better and like you can't reach to their standards. But yeah. it's so hard to not compare yourself. But well, especially in your world. Yeah. That's exactly what that world is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so true. You know, I don't it's have to compare myself to anybody, no. but you kind of do. Yeah. You're, you're sitting in a room with everybody that looks like you, I about know. your same height. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah know, totally. And then you're always analyzing, like, oh, why do they have this person here? We don't look alike. Hmm, yeah. What are they auditioning for? What are they looking for? And then you, yeah. like, try to, you know, navigate that. It's just so stressful. And you can't be super creative. And like I used to have black and blue hair, you know, yeah. but I can't have the blue in my hair for acting because they, yeah. you know, they won't ask you to dye your hair, but they'll like dismiss you right away. So it's just the look. So it's almost like going oh, to yeah. see a house, and I don't like the color. It doesn't. You yeah, can change that, you can change but it, but they're like, yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah, so unless you're like famous, and they can like really play around. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're, I'm not there yet. So <laughs> it's crazy. It's a world of discrimination Absolutely. and comparison. Hundred percent. It's crazy. Oh yeah, and it's. You know, that wouldn't be legal in other prof professions. Probably not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no you are not Arabic enough. We're, we can't hire you. Literally. Sorry, we need more. Yeah. On well, the I've, gone, I've gone with more. hijabs. I've worn hijabs to auditions and everything. And I'm like, whew, like taking them off as soon as I'm done. I'm like, I've just never been a hijab yeah. person. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. not for me, uh, which is, you know, fine. Like other people, it's okay. But it's just never been in my family. We've never worn them. So. Yeah. Um, so audition with them it's, it's interesting but um, yeah this the acting world is it's all about rejection yeah. and having to get through that and still build your self-confidence and, and try to deal with that you know but I find male actors have more more uh, sensitive um, egos than I think than the pride men comes do. into it maybe the competition <laughs> maybe um, but what uh, I feel like the women are tougher yeah. <laughs> a little bit just a little bit Oh, it could be. Then I've uh, I've noticed anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it kind of makes sense yeah. too because, like I said, uh, we're we're a little more primal, right? Yeah, so it's I a competition. So. <laughs> so I didn't win. It yeah. has not. Even if you didn't want the role, I yeah, didn't win. Right. That's true. Yeah, that's all it has yeah. to do with you know? so <laughs> We're a little bit different that yeah. way. Geared a little different. Yeah. You might be a little more mm -hmm. in, t in in line with. Well, okay. Well, what can I learn about this? Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, yeah. So that's. Yeah, so I think auditioning is harder than, than uh, pitching, and but pitching. I don't know, I've only pitched one so far, yeah. so we'll see. <laughs> if you were to pick, well, what's like your career path, you pick, where do you want to go? It's so hard, because I've always wanted to be an actor, always, but um, I love directing and creating, so I feel like I don't need to pick just one. Yeah. You know, like there are many people like Mindy Kaling who writes and produces and acts and directs, you know. Um, I feel like I can touch a little bit on everything. Um, I, you know, I, I, I wish I could, you know, be an actor just and, you know, succeed to all my auditions or most of them, but that's not yeah. the reality of it. No, so, right. you know, it's not the reality I, for anybody. No, and if I just sat there and waited, yeah. I'd wait probably forever. So, <laughs> this way, at least you can positively yeah. move your mind into exactly because the mindset that you need for, like you yeah. said, rejection, 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 yeah. oh, oh, little win, rejection, Window, exactly. Rejection, you know, you know so and there's I'm, lots of up and down. And I'm just, I'm, you know, opening those doors for myself. Yeah. You know, 
and by becoming a filmmaker and becoming doing this I get to tell my own stories and I get to go network and meet people who are kind of in the industry who might want me as an actor for something you know it's all about doors eh? lots of doors out there yeah. open them all exactly, <laughs> See <what> exactly. <laughs> you know build them you, you know yourself that's right so the other thing is like now we're talking about breaking in the industry there's a union Yes. For the union? How does that work? Well, I'm not part of the union, but okay. um, the union, yeah, it's called ACTRA in Canada, it's SAG in the States. Um, in Canada, you need three union credits to become a full member of the union. Okay. Um, and what it is, is so you have to get a role in a union production okay. to get a union credit. Okay. But you normally can't get a union credit. Unless union, you're in unless a you're union. union. So it's a very catch-22 yeah. for most. Yeah. Um, a lot of people get in by special skills, different languages, they can speak, things like that. Um, a lot in Ottawa can get in as well because of the movies of the week. They're not a lot like Hallmark movies. Yeah. They're not all, they're, they don't have so many union actors. So sometimes some actors, like non-union actors, will get in their credit that way. Okay, okay. Um, Just kind of being an, an extra on the set or, or No, on so, the I mean, if you, like my in-laws do a lot of background work on, on these um, but uh, they can. There's a back. There's actual background, okay. and so my in-laws have done enough where they've been. You know, I think it's like 15 uh, credits within 12 months of, um, of background credits. Okay. You can get your your actra voucher. Um, so it's a different kind of union. Okay. Like it's still the same union, but you're not for speaking roles. It's just for background. So okay. you know, you get paid more. You get better lunches. You have they have more stricter rules in terms okay. of like filming, um, but uh, it's not the same. And what does an uh, what would do the union offer? The union offers like pension, the you know um, bigger films. Okay. So you know more like the John Wick stuff, you know like oh, that, okay, like okay. like bigger bigger Hollywood stuff. Okay. That's more. Those are the big union stuff. Is that a goal eventually? Or oh, absolutely. Just, yeah. I mean, I would love to work with Keanu Reeves. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why not? not? No, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's always been the goal. Um, I think from when I was nineteen to now. Um, my ideals have changed a little bit yeah. in terms of, you know, I was like, I need to be famous, this and that. Now it's more like success to me is being a working actor. If I can pay my bills yeah. and live my life, whatever, you know. Just live off live, your passion. Basically, if yeah. I do that, that's a success to me. I don't need to be famous, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. But like, it, but being a working actor, that's success. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's skewed with time too, right? When you're in high school, that's popularity is so important yeah and I think yeah and, and you get a certain point you're like if I can just do what I like yeah and I think people and like people who are not in the industry think fame is you're if you're only an actor if you're famous mm -hmm. you know like I had a co-worker tell me like oh uh, and I was like oh you know I'm I always want to be an actor and she like laughed in my face and I was like you know that's never gonna happen right she's like don't I think you're gonna one. be in Jennifer Aniston and I was like you know there's more of being an actor than just being yeah. famous. And I feel like people have that mentality that like, if you're not famous, you're not an actor, but there are tons of working actors who, you know. And the stupid thing is somebody probably told Jennifer Addison, what do you think, you're Jane Fonda? Yeah, well like that's probably, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, and so it's Everybody's just, born the same way, naked, upside down, you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I was talking to uh, somebody and he's like, he was a hairdresser. He went to the Oscars a couple of years ago to do like, uh, the hair at the Oscars and stuff and we we're talking and he said uh, don't think that they're better than you he's like these people are not better than you you're the same yeah yeah you know blood yeah he's like you're the same don't think they're better so yeah. and, and that's really a they're just known a little more that's it mm -hmm. because and opportunities have turned right. their way and stuff like that so now to get these opportunities and and, and become an, an elite yeah. in what you do mm -hmm. Whether you're famous or not, yeah. whether you're rich or not, yeah. I find doesn't make a difference yeah. because when you like we, it's about passion, right? Yeah, absolutely. So whether you're the best yeah. surgeon in the world, you're yeah. probably not going to be known. Yeah. But you should have pride in that. That's still, that's perfect. You you should thrive for it. You yeah. did what you had to. Just the only difference is you're you're both doing your life's passion. Yeah. This one's in the sight of the eye, and this yeah. one's not. Yeah. So why is this person yeah. important and this one not? Yeah. Just because they're being seen and they're not, you know yeah. that. That's why you got to knock it yeah. down a bit. Eh? And I think yeah. as we grow older, we get a little more humble because of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I think you, you you don't get as starstruck. I think if you will, yeah. when you get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. I've met a few people when I'm just working yeah. at places and. Absolutely. I don't know, like right? even like I'm really bad at recognizing celebrities in person. <laughs> Kind of surprises yeah. you sometimes too, because I was like, nervous. Though. I was in Toronto <laughs> for TIFF, and then we ran into the Pink Power Ranger, and I was like, "Okay, 
So I stopped. Yeah. I was like, hi, can we take a picture with you? <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's the Pink Power Ranger, okay? I grew up with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it's just, yeah, we're not, it's, it's just this whole being famous thing has been skewed. I think it's, you know, being a celebrity has skewed people's minds about yeah. how what, you know, success is. And being famous is not, does not equal success. No. And, and I think the part of the the people admire about success yeah. or what they think success is when they see it in the mind in in the public's eye i think it's because these people well, when you make it there like you said there's yeah. a lot of effort yeah so to put all that effort in get rewarded yeah. be seen yeah is noble yeah absolutely. It, it's nice to see you love or yeah. i like people yeah. seeing people have success yeah because there's no overnight success people are like no. oh there's an overnight success I'm like there's no there's no overnight success no. it's so rare that you know you have that like one person was walking down the street and someone like discovered them there's so much work there's so much work and dedication yeah. that people don't see so much rejection so many tears so many like auditions and re you know it's it's so sad yeah. that you know it could take years before that one you know one big break yeah and then that becomes that success and they're like oh this person it was just in this one movie and it's yeah, their overnight right. success i'm like no but you didn't see did like, you see the, there were an extra in this one extra in this or one? like all the classes <laughs> they took and yeah, all the auditions yeah. they got rejected and everything they you know yeah. like they'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars going to auditions before they make money right that's right so. it's an investment Absolutely. They got a good return on their investment. Yeah. Well, and that's it. People don't think that, like, as an actor, you are your own business. And right. people think, oh, it's my career. Like, no, but it's you are your own business. You're your brand. And exactly. Yeah. And, like, that's what I'm building. I'm building a brand and building myself um, as a filmmaker and as an actor and as a producer, you know, and as a, a feminist and yeah. in film and whatnot. So it's, it's, but people don't see that. No, and, and I think uh, acting is one of those where people feel bad because of maybe their progression for success, mm -hmm. but okay, so so the guy that did Jerry Maguire was yeah. eight years old when he did it. They yeah. needed an eight-year-old actor. Yeah. It's, you know hard, I mean? it's, it's hard not to compare yourself because you're like, well, what does this person have that I don't have? Yeah. You know, this person's not that great, but I'm, ba you know, like it's, yeah. you don't know what they're looking for ever, and it's no, so hard. No. You know, you could look like the director's ex-girlfriend, and that's why you did not get the job. And it literally just comes down to that. Very discriminatory. A hundred percent. But that's what happens. Sometimes yeah. they're like, I just don't like her look. You don't have the look I like. Yeah. You know, not enough buff on your look. Exactly. Uh, you know, like I'm just saying, but it could be. That totally could be yeah, it. Yeah. So what, that's why I think when people see the success mm -hmm. and see that, they don't see the work going climbing oh, yeah, up they to don't it. See it. So they respect this. Yeah. But they also think it's luck. Yeah. That's why your coworker said, Don't yeah. think you can be her. Yeah. Why not? Oh, well, sorry. because she's lucky. No. no. She worked and worked and worked and worked like I do. No. And worked and worked just like I, I do. And, and I work hard know? and you know, people don't see that. Like I do my, my nine to five. I go home, I take care of my kids and my family. And then I write, or I'm doing emails, or I'm working on a festival, or I'm working on a film, and, yeah. and it's, you know, for when we were doing Dirty Love, like, it was, it was my, I was on my phone all the time, and my husband had to understand, like, okay, this is just temporary for now, yeah. until, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm emailing, like, the, the sound, the music guy, or the sound guy, or, like, the yeah. editor, and yeah. then back and forth, and we're talking about the website, and take pictures, and we're doing this, and it's back and forth, with edits, yeah. and cuts, and music, and blah, 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 like, Constantly, thousands constantly. of micro decisions. So many, you know, <laughs> and it's me, and then like going yeah. like this. So it was, it's hard, but like it's so much work. And then going to bed at midnight, and then back again, my yeah. routine, yeah. and taking care of my kids, and and, and doing this almost full. Then filming on weekends, and and you know having to sacrifice some weekends with my kids because I have to do this, yeah. and uh, it's it's tough. But like I want to eventually make this full time That's right. because I don't, I don't. And that's what people yeah. don't see. Yeah, is that like that's the hard work, you know? I'm going yeah. to film classes. I'm creating stuff so that I can keep moving. So eventually, that I can do this full time and and, and not work in the government. Create your own momentum. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. And it takes a while. And yeah. and like I said, that's what people don't see. So that they yeah. they admire it. They think it's luck. They yeah. don't see it. They don't see all the hard work. Like you said, they think it's overnight. Yeah. You, you saw that iceberg yeah i have picture. it yeah, yeah it's on my instagram <laughs> yeah i have it too because it's the same thing like yeah. I, I run businesses yeah. and the businesses are doing well but yeah. it wasn't always that way yeah. and i didn't start on the best foot yeah. you know so when you look at that people see me now yeah i remember when i was starting my business i was as i was growing it there was a lot of like getting up at four o'clock in the morning yeah. coming home at midnight yeah. and just going you know, to bed right. and, and it I'm feels like up. you hit the, the the pillow and get back up yeah. like that's it that's yeah. all it was five seconds back mm -hmm. up let's go mm -hmm. 
and I remember seeing a lot of the guys that I, I was working with, they were working just a normal eight hours mm -hmm. and going home and that's it. And I remember one morning I came in and one of my, one guy that I was working with, he's like, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and said, you remember this. <laughs> All I want you to do is yeah. remember this. So yeah. in 10 years, when somebody goes, look at that lucky guy, you yeah. can say, no, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> I was there. I saw it. There was no luck involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people don't see that. Yeah, absolutely. So they get yeah. turned on by the red, by the, yeah. the, the, the final product. Yeah. And don't see all of it going in. Absolutely. And uh, that's what I think the ma mindset is incredibly important. Yeah. And like I said, with with your industry, mm -hmm. it must be crucial. Yeah. Going with those ups and downs all the time. Oh yeah, and you know, and I do the best I can to support you know our local community. Um, I try to have different actors come on my films. Um, I, I was running a female film festival, so we can have mentorship for women in like, just growing. Yeah. Um, so we can build you know more of a women like community in in film here. Um, and mentorship is so big and I feel like there's not enough of that mm -hmm. um, like I, I'm learning from some people that I know and and it, a lot of people don't want to give away their secrets yeah, not even like their secrets it's just that like day. they think that you know we're fighting for one seat at the table and we shouldn't be fighting for that one seat at no. the table there should be more seats at the table yeah, so yeah. like people don't want to share their knowledge because they're so scared someone else is going to take their job and that's a problem yeah uh, and I think we should build and it, it, and I find that ideas and, and, and mentorship is not a no. currency. No. It should be a commodity. Okay. Just, just, just I give feel it. like people <laughs> should absolutely be mentoring, 100%. Yeah. And like I feel you build uh, loyalty, you build community that way. It's so important and we don't have a lot of it and this is what I'm trying to do here in Ottawa yeah, is yeah. build that uh, community, especially for women in film here. Well, especially when you look at mm -hmm. uh, everybody around mm -hmm. and when you're, when you're working together yeah. as a community, yeah. It's a lot easier to bring big motion pictures into yeah. Ottawa if all of Ottawa looks good and works good together. Yeah. Then instead of coming here and seeing, mm -hmm. I don't know how many actors are in Ottawa, yeah. let's say 5,000 of them. Yeah. So let's say 5,000 mm -hmm. independent people. Mm -hmm. Instead, you the, the big production companies can come here and go, mm -hmm. Ottawa has a nice big pool of people that love to work together and, and we feel great going there. Yeah, and like, you know, we, there a lot of them will come here and then bring people from Montreal and Toronto to come work here. And mm -hmm. you're like, well, we have crew here. And, yeah. and if we mentor more crew, we'll, we'll get a bigger pool of people and, and they'll hire more internally here in Ottawa. And they might as well, because it's probably cheaper to hire here than to bring somebody, for sure. Absolutely. But so. people are so scared to mentor other people because they're scared they're going to lose their jobs. That's right. So and that, that's such a tough thing, and I, I don't like that. You know, I'm yeah. all about community. I'm all about mentorship. I'm all about raising other people up. Yeah. So that's that that's kind of what the podcast is. Yeah. I figure uh, I made the podcast to help yeah. me, mm -hmm. and uh, if I can help me and help other people, absolutely. And then what I found when I started this project is that everybody I talk to mm -hmm. is open minded, mm -hmm. ready to help, not a problem. Yeah. I find that incredible mm -hmm. because I'm starting something I have no experiences, I'm not mm -hmm. versed in, mm -hmm. but. People are willing to help, yeah. and you don't even know what's out there until you start talking to these people, and you're like, "What? Like, we have this in Ottawa? Like, we like you That's do right. this, and like you find out like all these special skills that people have that yeah. you didn't even know were here, which is great, and then other people get to find out." Yeah, yeah, and it, it's networking is the key, yeah. and I think with inter internet today, yeah. mm -hmm. what's the limit? Yeah. There is no limit, yeah. so we might as well utilize it. Mm -hmm. And it's so big, and yeah. there's just, just no no limit to it. You can just work together. Uh, you can get advice from somebody in California tonight. Oh, yeah. You know, and like, <laughs> and like with Dirty Love, I was so lucky because you know once I put uh, Dirty Love out, um, and we have like some a bit of kink in the show. I had a lot of people from the kink community reach out to me and say, okay. "Hey, I love your show, and can you do this for your second season?" And like you know, I got to ask them questions yeah. about BDSM more, more and things like that. One hundred percent. And like they're so open and stuff. And the more you like genuine to people the more authentic you are the more you'll get that back yeah you know and um so I've, I've networked with a lot of people and people are so fantastic and i'm so lucky to have been involved with you know like the films that i've been and like people i've been meeting and then like you just there's there's no limit to networking no you know and it should be used and seen as a positive for everybody 100%. growth for everybody yeah like don't use and abuse yeah, you know? no, it's uh, the, the more people you yeah. can help, you know, a hand. Uh, Don't just take, you have to give yeah. back as well. Well, success is a hand up and a hand down, yeah. right? Yeah. A hand to help and a hand to get yeah, help. Absolutely. It, and I feel, I feel like more people should see it that way. That's right. It goes, from, it goes right to mentorship. You're getting mentorship yeah. and you can give yeah. it. 
you, you don't stop it there, right? You, you can't stop the good deed. So that that's kind of how I see and it. It's because like at TIFF, you see a lot of the networking, and it's like, hi, hi, look at me, look at me, look at me, yeah. you know. And you're like, yeah. oh my god, like chill, yeah. you know. And I like, I, I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I hate that. Like trying to be all schmoozy and stuff. Like I want to yeah. be authentic and have a decent conversation. Right. And like this one distributor guy I met from New York, and I was just we were talking and. I was like, you know, uh, like, I just didn't want to talk about film anymore. I was like, I'm so tired of this, like, all week. I'm like, can we just have, like, an, an authentic conversation? And I was asking him about healthcare in the States. I'm like, how does this work? You know, we had, like, yeah. a long conversation about healthcare in, yeah. in, in the States. And he, would, like, emailed me. He was like, it was really nice to have a conversation yeah, a about something else other than, you know, film. Because yeah. people are just trying to sell themselves constantly yeah, at yeah, you. And, and yeah. look at me, look at me, look at me, you know? And you're just like... Yeah. Just need a break. Like, here's my card. <laughs> make sure I'm the first one you contact you know. Make sure, and and you kind of you see it. It's a doggy dog world, and I you got to you sure. got to kind of get the step ahead. But on the other hand, I think that the people that probably have yeah. the most success are people that just network, like yeah. you said, freely. Yeah. Just because at one point something will pop in your mind, and, hey, that guy from that place I would just, be awesome. Right. You know, and I just feel like in this world that we currently live in with social media, there's nothing that's authentic anymore. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, like yeah. YouTubers and things like that. Like it's just so hard to see what's real and what's not. Yeah. And, and um, I try to keep it real. And you know me, like I, I, yeah. I feel like I'm an authentic person and genuine person and I want the best for everybody. And like, I just, I try so hard not to like be fake or come off as fake. And if yeah. I catch myself in that like social media, like whirlwind of like, oh, what do I post today? And try yeah, to like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. no, no, I gotta like chill. It'd be real. Yeah. Because yeah. I just hate the fake stuff. That's my hardest problem with yeah. starting a podcast is I want to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. I think my reasons are valid and good. Yeah. And my intent is good. Mm -hmm. um, I want to help people, yeah. but I don't want to bother people. Yeah. So, you know, I yeah. put it out there on Facebook and I'm like, please don't take this as me bothering you. I know. I saw hard enough like that too. And, you know, because like I have been like, you know, uh, and I'm not trying to like step on YouTubers and stuff like and they, and they're a whole world on their own. And, and some could be genuine and some are not. So, I, like, you know, I just, but yeah, like the way I am with uh, like Instagram and stuff like that. And with, especially when I was promoting Dairy Love, I was kind of like shoving it down people's throats because they're like, you know what, people will just uh, like block you if they don't yeah, want to see yeah, it and whatever. Right. Just put it out there. And see what happens. That's I'm like, right. you're right. And like, you know, if there's things that I get really annoyed if I see too much, I'll just like unfollow. Right. You know, I try to support as many people as I can in my community and like my friends as much as I can. But sometimes you're like, okay, I need to chill for a bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to have a social media break sometimes because yeah. it gets overwhelming. Yeah, it does. But and you get the pressure. Oh, like like percent Like I stopped. Uh, I stopped following on Instagram like beauty bloggers and things like that. I only follow a couple of them because I was starting to get in my head like, well, I don't, I don't do because I don't I used to do makeup all the time so I worked in when I was in college but I, I don't as much anymore and I'm just like and now there's like these fillers and the Botox and the you know I have to look like this and I have to look yeah, like that yeah. and I don't look like this and how come you know and, and, and I was getting in my head and I was like I need yeah. to chill like yeah. I need to like not look at this stuff anymore because even with some you know at my age I was just like I shouldn't care anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I want to be healthy I want to be you know fit for myself yeah uh, but not not to fit someone else's beauty standards yeah, you right. know especially societies that say i have to have a waist this big and the hips this big and the, you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah. and liposuction and whatever like it's not real no no it's not real because like you know i, I remember last year i went to uh, florida and i go on a beach and i was uh, i really wanted to i was on a good track last yeah. year getting in shape mm -hmm. and really start that's why i really decided i want to do a career out of yeah. this somehow and I remember going to the mm. beach, and I don't know how many people there were there. But the one thing I remember, mm. there was one guy mm. with a body that stuck out. Okay. Why? One. Because he was built. He was built. Like, okay. He was just built. Yeah. Good shape. One guy. So this is the rea real yeah, world. Yeah, the real world. Absolutely. Maybe there's 100 people there. Maybe 150. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. And there's only one guy. And there's guy. one guy. Yeah. So congratulations to that one guy. Yeah. But that being said, why should I feel bad? Why should my dad feel bad? Yeah. Why should this little boy over there feel bad? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all of us are uh, all share the one thing. Yeah. We're not perfect. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know well, I mean? then, you know, when I feel like this, like social media and society had like have put these, you know, yeah. like stigmas out there and, and you know portrayal of what people should be should look like. And, and it's, it's tough because even when I started this project yeah. and I'm I'm trying to put myself in shape. As I'm trying to look, like, uh, trying to inform myself, yeah. you you get bombarded yeah. every which way. Mm -hmm. So then you really got to stand back mm -hmm. and focus a yeah. little bit and kind of like, okay, well, yeah. what's going to work for me? What do I think is going to work right. for me? 
And the thing that I feel really feel annoyed with is when you start having a commercial, and uh, it's not really yeah. a commercial, it's something that pops up. And the first two minutes sound great, you know, like you want to change your life, you want to yeah. feel great. And then two minutes, so you're tuning in, you're like, yeah, I, well, yeah. What, like how do I do yeah. this? You know, I'm ready to put in the work. Yeah. I'm w ready to put in the hours. Yeah. I'm ready to put in the discipline. Yeah. And you wait two minutes, and it's like, buy this pill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, there's no teas, no teas, no pills, no whatever are going to make you lose weight. No. There's there's none of that. Like, that, that stuff is, like, it's fake. Yeah. It's bad for your health, and that will kill you before anything. Well, it's just like being an actor. Mm -hmm. there, you can't just pick and be an actor. No. There, there's work involved there's with work it. Involved. There's work involved. There's climb involved 100%. to it. percent And you know what it takes. Yeah. yeah. Just like I know what it takes. I know it takes eating right sacrifice exercise determination yeah. i know what it takes mm -hmm. but will you do it yeah. you know like it's the hard work that you need to put in okay. i did a fitness journey last i want to say is it last year i can't remember no no the year before i w i was going to the gym yeah it was the year before i was going to a gym next to my office uh, but i'm in a different office now so um and um it was owned by a woman she's super great um and i was going there and then she had a contest on and i won this 12 week this contest. So uh, I got personal training with her. I got to have the classes with her. She helped my nutrition. It was like the best shape of my life. I did lose much weight loss, only like a couple pounds, but I lost so many inches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and that's really I built muscle overall. Yeah. And I toned up and I tightened up and it was like the best shape of my life. And then I changed jobs and I wasn't next to that gym anymore. Yeah. But I really loved about her and that gym. It was that um, small classes. Um, and she was really careful on how you were exercising. Um, because she wanted to, you know, she walked around class, she'd make sure that you weren't going to hurt yourself. She was yeah. showing you properly. Um, and she kind of got to know everybody. So, you know, she knew that, like, well, you're you're using, like, light weights now. Like, you got to move yeah. up now. You can you're, do more You can do more now. Yeah. Like, you know, she really got to know everybody. And she really know what she, she knew what she was talking about. Yeah. You know, and we talked when we talked about nutrition and stuff. And, you know, what works for women doesn't work for men. And, like, protein powders, you know. We were going with, like, uh, protein powders that were made specifically for me by a certain mm -hmm. company yeah, here okay. in Ottawa, very okay. local. Because, like, why would we use the same protein powder? Yeah, we're not. We're not the same. No. We're not made the same. You I know? have a lot of testosterone that you don't have. You know, like, it's just like, <laughs> but you're a bigger <laughs> guy than I am. Yeah. Like, why would we it's have normal. the same yeah, kind? No, so, right. you know, we're very specific on the kind of protein that I was taking and for hormonal ba balance. Yeah, Women yeah. have hormones that affect their weight. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I had endometriosis. Endometriosis is like, um, I lost an ovary in a tube because of severe endometriosis before yeah. I had kids. Um, and, and that's due to, you know, um, we don't, they don't really even know how endometriosis happens, but, uh, it's a hormonal issue. Um, and where like blood ends up getting kind of stuck to your uterus okay. or your lining doesn't shed properly, blood gets stuck kind of everywhere. And mine ended up on my ovary that created a cyst. And then every month the cyst would grow bigger and bigger okay. and bigger. And that cyst ended up being a football wow. of blood inside. So they had to remove all that okay. and, and that's all hormonal. So it's you know, making sure that you're not eating processed foods that yeah. is contributing to this hormonal imbalance. You gotta eat whole foods, you gotta like, don't eat soy, because mm -hmm. even soy is healthy, it's not that healthy, yeah. because it, it mimics estrogen. Um, yeah. So yeah. there's like, you know, a lot of men who drink soy milk all the time have man boobs because yeah. there's, yeah. you know, it mimics yeah. estrogen. So there's really, you really gotta find the right person, the right trainer who's so knowledgeable in this kind of stuff, who's gonna help you find that right uh, diet and the right workout that's going to work for you. So yeah. what might work for you will not work for me. That's right. Right, and I think that a lot of people don't see that. And what are personal trainers but mentors? <laughs> right. Right. So like when we discussed mm -hmm. that a little bit earlier, that's where this all comes into yeah. play, right? You you get your mentorship. Yeah. From on all aspects of mm -hmm. your view. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't y I in the physical world yeah. mentorship be viewed great, but yeah. in the acting world mentorship yeah. be viewed it, right. as an attack? You know what right. I mean? Like it's yeah, it's like it shouldn't be like that. For no, sure. it shouldn't be like that because uh, like in the other world, like mm -hmm. it, that, that's the whole point of the business. Yeah. Like when I go, like mm -hmm. my 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 business is I do mm -hmm. tree work. Mm -hmm. But when I go see a homeowner mm -hmm. and talk about their tree, I don't only talk about the tree we're mm -hmm. going to do and the mm -hmm. project and what's going on. I also inform them as much as I can about all the other ones. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing I want for them is to do something to that tree right. that 15 years down the road is going to cause that to fall right on their house. Right. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, and I see it in my industry that way too as well. And well, you're probably like you knowledge, mentioned it. now more knowledgeable about trees too. I'm sure you like you know about like the diseases that are on yeah, certain oh, trees absolutely. that die, and you have to like. Yeah. And some people are just like, I'm just going to cut down your tree without yeah, yeah, knowing yeah. like yeah. 
the repercussions of yeah. what it could cause. What it could cause, and you know, there, there's all sorts of different things that can be affected by mm -hmm. the trees and what affects them, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, all sorts of different questions. Why is my tree? Yeah, why is this one yellow yeah. in the fall and this one's red? Well, yeah. soil pH, different yeah. nutrition yeah. in the soil, all that makes a difference. But sharing that knowledge yeah. doesn't matter if it's tree work, mm -hmm. acting, or nutrition. Mm -hmm. It, it's the way to have everybody make it a little bit better yeah. because by me sharing that knowledge about the tree mm -hmm. He won't damage his next tree yeah. and maybe this tree will grow a little better yeah. And maybe he'll share that knowledge with his neighbor well, And then go. maybe his neighbor's tree is going to be a little nicer mm -hmm. and here we are talking about trees But it doesn't matter but, the uh, fact but then in is the end, like his neighbor might come back to you because this guy knows his yeah. stuff Yeah, and know? he will I will go to a yeah. place, give them a free quote, mm. explain everything to do, yeah. and they say, thank you, I'll do it myself, and I go, have a good day. Yeah. I've shared my knowledge, I'm good to go. Okay. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. But they call me back, like you said, yeah. later on for, oh, you're the tree guy, I knew I'd call you. Yeah, because you know? like, you know what you're talking about. That's like, you right. know, and there's, like with trainers, there's so many people who are trainers nowadays. Like, who are these, you know, are this person being coached by another coach, by another coach, like those, like, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, I'm not going to name whatever, but like, those those there's those kinds of trainers then there's you know people who are actually educated in like mm -hmm. personal training or like gym you know and, and so um you really have to watch who you're going for the right kind of education That's like right. to educate you on your body type who will understand what works for you and what doesn't work for you yeah um which was why i was really happy with this trainer you know um and like i have a friend of mine who i, I told you about earlier like who's great as well and who has like so much you know university and education yeah. and and this stuff and, and like the only person i know who has a bachelor's or master's degree in gym yeah. <laughs> you know um who who's training olympians and stuff and his method works and he just knows that it's not the same for everybody like yeah. we're not gonna worry you know our, and our goals are not the same are, they're not the same no and our bodies are not gonna react the same i'm pretty way. sure you're not your goal is not to bench press 300 pounds <laughs> You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go train no, tomorrow. No, my God, no. Break my back. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's, it's you know, depending on how you, you know, if you want to be a fitness model, depending if you just want strength, you know, the strength and conditioning mm -hmm. and, and as opposed to losing weight. And, and, like, there's so many things that factor in. And, and then in the nutrition, you know, some people believe in, like, you know, that dairy gives you inflammation, which mm -hmm. probably does. And then, so, but, but. And there's a keto and then there's. Um, oh, well, that's there's, it. Um, Oh fasting, uh, intermittent yeah. fasting, and, and there's yeah, there's, there's and and I find that in the end of the thing, that's why I started Curious E because I'm curious, mm -hmm. and this way I get to kind of educate myself mm -hmm. in a wide range, yeah. and then kind of pick for me, yeah. right? Yeah. Like not that I'm gonna do nothing until then, yeah. but picking for me means, like you yeah. said, the, the education of the trainer, yeah. um, the motivation they can pass on, yeah. and how they relate to you, right? Yeah. Um, so one of the reasons I started this podcast was because of, I want, I'm sure there's people that relate to me, mid thirties, yeah. family, overweight, Don't tired tell anybody our age. Shh. <laughs> I can tell, I'll tell you my age no, and she's she born in February. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> so, no, I'm older than you. <laughs> yes, you are. All seven months. Hey, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forever 30. I'm forever 30. <laughs> yeah. That's what my beard says right here. You've had a beard spots. since we were 14, yeah, okay? Right. It wasn't gray then. Okay, well, it's barely gray now. <laughs> yeah. I can barely see it. Just in the two little devil kids. spots. Yeah. It's no, it's the business. It's not the kids. The kids is normal. It's the business. But, like, I mean, overall with health, if you want to, like, even just start, if you want to feel better, you eat better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, simple. 100%. It's, um... It's the difference between knowledge and mm -hmm. applied knowledge, right? Knowing you have to do 20 push-ups yeah. or knowing you should do push-ups every day yeah. won't help you. Yeah. <laughs> Applying your knowledge right, and doing it. it is a whole different yeah. thing, right? So, yeah, so. Um, so that's what it is with hard work. Yeah. Uh, whether it's me trying to get in shape, you trying, it, it's, yeah. it's all hard work, it's persistence, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. Yeah. There's no shortcuts. No, there are no shortcuts. Yeah. There are no shortcuts. <laughs> I wish there were. I just want someone to give me a free break. <laughs> yeah. But no. But honestly, like, there's also, I believe in, like, the power of the universe and the manifestation, mm -hmm. like, and then, like, thinking positively. And yeah. I think that totally changes your body chemistry as well. Like, putting out those positive vibes, you'll get it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, I've been really determined. I've been, like, listening to a lot of, like, self-help type, mm -hmm. um, you know, podcasts or books and, and really about changing your mindset, yeah. you know, about 
and be like, oh, it's, I'm, you know, I'm not lucky again, or I didn't do this again. And but changing your mindset to being like, why didn't this work? Okay, how am I gonna make it better? Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't get it this time, but what did I learn? Okay, I'm gonna apply for the next one. And let's yeah. just go keep going that way. You know, write and down your journal every day. Sometimes it's just admitting to yourself that mm -hmm. in this circumstance there's yeah. nothing else I could have done. Well, there's that too. This is, this is just not, this yeah. one's just not for me. I'm also of a, a, a big um, believer in everything in its time for its place, yeah. right? Because um, if I look at myself when I was 19, yeah. give 19 year old Eric millions of dollars yeah. and a lot of time on his hands, it would not have ended well. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that everything has a progression right. for a reason for us, right? right. Like it's we may be sad that we're not where we want to be at yeah. this point, but that being said, there might be a reason for yeah. it. And this Maybe was a huge thing for me, for you know, and that's, that is interesting, because like when I was, so I moved back from Montreal when I was like 24-ish, 24, 24. Um, and then I got into the government right away just, you know, to pay some bills. So I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just gonna do this until I can get like an acting gig. But I didn't know what Ottawa had to offer at the time. I didn't do the proper research that I had, um, but I wasn't acting, I was taking classes. So I'm like, where is this going? Like, I, you know, and I yeah. was just so depressed because I wasn't an actor yet. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, and I had tried to be an actor in Montreal, but I, I wasn't, I guess, networking properly, and I wasn't doing the right things, and I wasn't, you know, as educated as I am now. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have anyone lead, holding my hand, helping me, like, hey, you need these headshots, or let's use this, or go to this agency, or go to this. You know, mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of background work, but I wasn't taking the right classes. I was in school, but I should have been taking more more classes instead of just in my theater class. I had mm -hmm. to do more and more and more, and like, and I didn't, I didn't meet the right people because you, you have to network and meet yeah, the right yeah, people right. to move, keep moving forward. Well, that's what post-secondary school is. Mm -hmm. Like, if I can tell yeah. my kids, go to post-secondary yeah. school, the simple reason, the only reason I would tell them to do yeah. so is to go network in your field. But I did. Like, I mean, I did you know, that, like, but it wasn't enough, yeah, you know what I mean, in my industry. Because I was doing theater and film, which I, why I, you know, I, I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know, but then, yeah. like, I should have taken more extra outside acting classes oh, yeah. to meet more actors on the outside. Be more versatile. More yeah, film yeah, okay. stuff. Yeah, instead of more theater you know and like so and then and that could have led to more things I was doing a lot of background work so I did meet a lot of extras and like people who were trying to be actors too but we we're kind of all in the same place and, yeah, yeah, yeah but not moving forward mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and then I moved back here and I was just so depressed and like you know working on nine to five I'm like what am I doing with my life this is not where I had planned to be um and then I didn't do anything up until um I was on my first mat leave with Inara and then I was like telling my husband, I was like, I, what am I doing with my life? I'm like, how am I going to tell my daughter to follow her dreams and I can't even do it myself? I love that. You know, like what? Because I, I say that all the time. So that's it. Like you have to like, <laughs> how yeah. am I going to tell her to do this? And she'll be like, Mom, follow your you're dreams. Gonna I'm going to go to work to a job I hate Wait. to put food on the table so you can follow so you your can dreams. Follow. Exactly. You know, do my, as I say, not as I do. Right. And you know, my mom <laughs> had zero opportunity. And um, so why am I going to, I'm not, I refuse to get stuck in the cycle again. Like I refuse. So then. Um, I joined an agency and then from that I got into a web series and then more acting classes met more people and then from that web series um, the director was like hey it looks like you like being behind the scenes you want to come help me direct so I got to do that I got oh, to produce nice. I got to you know and I still work with him and like that's six years later like I I'm working with him on a corporate shoot next week as an art director nice. he's like you highlight your style so like you know I know that you can do this stuff can you do it? Can you come work with me? Right. So, um, and you know, he's helped me film my first short film. And then through that, like I've met more people and then film festivals and, and you know, like just built my reputation mm -hmm. that way. And, and it just, things started moving forward for me um, from, from joining the agency and then yeah. auditions and commercials and, and, you know, different things. And then I joined a film festival and, and then I won a film festival and then I moved forward, you know, like, yeah. in, um, it got moving when you got back into it, when your mind was back into right, it, when you probably. decided. When I decided, and then it's, you know, it just started going from there. Yeah. So meeting the right people at the right time, you know, doing the right things at the right time. Um, so, and it's in the last couple of years, two, three years have been like the most intense for me, you yeah. know. So we did a short film called Inara, which is my daughter's name, uh, for a film festival that won me two awards at that festival that we did it for. 
uh, here in Ottawa. And then I sent it to outside festivals that won me a few more awards. Oh, nice. Um, and I collaborate with this person a lot who did my cinematography. He's my friend and like my creative partner. We do a lot of stuff together and, and he um, does like a lot of photography for me. Uh, we just shot another short film recently. Um, we did a, he did a, my brother's music. He's my brother's friend. Okay. Originally, I saw okay. him. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him. So, um, I did the same with my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, so now, uh, like, we did a music video together. Um, that's why we first did, you know, we did a music video. He was a photographer. He's a chiropractor and a okay. photographer. And then we did a music video together with my brother. And then when um, this film festival came about, I said, you know, I want to do a short film for this. And they give you a theme for that you have three weeks. Or at the time, it was three weeks. Here's your theme. And your film has to be no longer than three minutes. Okay. And so I was like, I'm only going to do this if you help me. And he, if you do my cinematography for me. And he's like, okay. And it was his first film. Okay. And that, like, gave us all these awards. And then we moved on. We did other things. He did my intro to Dirty Love. He did my all my photography for Dirty Love. But he okay. didn't film Dirty Love. Like just a couple of scenes. Um, but... Um, he he helped me a lot in like the website the promotion so he did all that stuff together um we did we did another short film recently we work a lot together and um and i manage a lot of his stuff when people want to work with him i manage that stuff so okay. to help him out on that side of things um but like when you find a creative partner that work you work really well together like you gotta you gotta stick with those people yeah. and stuff. but like you know from then like uh he only started when we did inara and like you know his his uh, relationship with people in like the industry here has been moving a lot too and stuff so like I think um, networking is super super important and, and just like pursuing that and just pursuing your dreams and just keep going and one thing leads I think when once you decide a hundred percent like this is what I gotta do everything changes yeah and things open your up. your network yeah open that up. You, For sure. you know you, you spent your entire life not calling a network yeah and then, <laughs> and then you, you start a project, or you make yeah. up your mind on something, yeah. and then, and then it's a network. It's like and the universe it just up. like it opens up, listens to you, and just says, "Okay, here you go." Yeah, it's like so oh, finally, he found what he wanted. He, he finally opened the door for him. There yeah, you go. You go, know. go through. And so here I was, like at twenty five, crying all the time, being like, "I'm not famous yet. <laughs> what <laughs> happening?" <laughs> you know. So it's it's um, maybe this is more my path. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and you're really creating what I have to do and like really building my doors and building my opportunities. And, and the inter so. entertainment industry is, is, is huge. It's, so it, hard it's not just a few that you see yeah. that are making it in the box office and, no. and at the theater no. and on Netflix. There's everywhere. Oh my God. And I feel like, you know, people underestimate independent films. And, and I think people really should watch independent films because, you know, Holly, when you're in like Hollywood films and producers, the producers have power over the director and the mm -hmm. director's vision. So, you know, maybe the director had a mission, it's not the final cut, like that's not what you're gonna get. Yeah. And there's all these rules and regulations that they, you know, have to follow. Independent films, like you're gonna get raw, mm -hmm. real stuff, you know. And we talked about earlier, they're mostly all volunteers. Well, no, well, that's depending. So, like, our, yes, yeah, ours are there is this well. stuff, you know, and there's a lot, it's mostly volunteer, a lot, but there's a lot of independent films that get funding, yeah. but they're not Hollywood box offices. No, that's You right. know, like, it's very different. So, there's still independent films that are made with $1 million or $100,000 mm -hmm. or $500,000 that may not make it to you know hollywood but they're going to be at different film festivals and things like that or maybe we'll end up on like amazon prime or or I, maybe I, netflix but i think mm -hmm. let, let me correct me if i'm yeah. wrong you're the pro <laughs> um i think in in that industry when you talk about independent yeah. films and stuff like that i can i can maybe make a case mm -hmm. for independent films mm -hmm. having more passion involved in them absolutely because when you look at box office films yeah. they kind of they answer a demand yeah the demand wants today yeah. superheroes. Yeah. Make another superhero. We yeah. need more superheroes. Because they feel that they've right? already they they're they're like, well, this this pattern works. Like this this formula, it works. We we know it makes money. Gemini in there. That's it. Like so this is why when, you know, Black Panther or Crazy Rich Asians came out and made crap loads of money, they're like, Whoa, that's weird. Yeah. How did this make money? They're like, because people want diversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're like, We don't understand. But like <laughs> you because they've never done it before, yeah. they don't think it works. Yeah. But it works. Put pretty girl, put pretty guy, here's your plots already written. Mm -hmm. Put it together and here's your box office. But they film. don't think <laughs> but they don't think diversity like I think is. they're so late. I think hundred percent they're late. Yeah, I think independent films are ten years ahead of the oh, curve yeah. because 
well, not 10 years ahead. But there's just not a lot of money in today. them. Yeah, that's right. what it is. There's not. So, you know, Hollywood is funding all these, like, filled out of pocket and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's you know, they're the ones putting the big bucks. And, you know, like, we went to, um, I went to see a panel at TIFF with, um, for Hustlers. Okay. You know, the Jennifer Lopez movie. So yeah. it was Constance Wu, who's the lead. Uh, Lily Reinhardt, she's on Riverdale. She was in there, too. Okay. And the director and two of the producers. And they're like, we knocked on every door. She's like, we only made this movie with $20 million. And she's like, I know it sounds like a lot of money. She's like, it's not a lot of money. But like $20 million, we're like, that's, we're like, that's crazy. That's a lot of money. And yeah. they're like, no, that's yeah. not a lot of money for them. But like independent films can be like $0 yeah. of what we put into it, like $5,000 to like 100000 to yeah. a million. Like I know uh, a guy in Hollywood, in LA, who's an independent director he's made his like I think third film at a his was like a million dollars almost you know and, and that's still an independent film yeah and for us we're like what the fuck that's yeah. not independent you know from yeah. Canada that's not independent but it is for them yeah. that's independent still you know and he gets yeah. power over his stuff but you know for Hollywood you have all these producers who are putting in the money you're the director doesn't really get final say no, unless, he's, unless he's Martin Scorsese yeah different story okay. but because it's it's not mm -hmm. about the content mm -hmm. Or the intent. It's yeah. about the return on investment. 100%. And right now we know superhero films have a great return on investment. Right. But then they, but they didn't think Wonder Woman was going to be great. No. So they only yeah. gave her a one film deal. They like didn't promote it. They didn't do yeah. anything. And then she exploded. And yeah. they're like, well, what's happening? Like, well. That's why they're late because they have to wait yeah. for the demand to create what they want. So they're already instinctively mm -hmm. late. Oh, yeah. While I find that independent filmmakers. They don't wait for a curve. No. They go with their they're, heart they're, and they're passion. Exactly. They're like, I'm going to make this film. I'm going to raise the money. I'm going to find the money somehow. I want I'm this story this. told. Exactly. And they're no matter do how. It. Yeah. 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 So they do have, like, yeah. And I, I was having this conversation with someone in Toronto about it, how independent films have, they, they inspire you more yeah. to tell your story, to be more creative. You know, because yeah, you can play with, you know, different looks and lights and different things. And it's, you're not following a Hollywood template. Yeah, that's right. So. And you're not competing with, well, especially when you talk about special effects and stuff yeah. like that. It'd be hard to compete money-wise with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Just the programs they use is just yeah. un unbelievable. But, yeah, the, the storytelling, I can't say it can't be or can't be better, but I think in independent yeah. films, that's all you have is a well, story. Well, you know, with Dirty Lab, absolutely. To, you know what I mean? And with Dirty Lab, like, I have people be, like, someone was like, oh, I mean, it, it's good for, for what it is. Like, you know, it's not HBO or it's not Game of Thrones. I'm like, do you know how much Game of Thrones has as a budget? Did Are you kidding Look at me? one of their fight scenes. You know? You're talking 10, 20,000 people dressed up alike standing next to each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm an employer. Go, yeah. I know that if I employ a guy for eight hours, yeah. whether he's standing there or not, that's two hundred bucks for one guy. Yeah, there's but ten thousand of those well, people. Well, yeah, they're, they're not as ten, <laughs> yeah, they're not ten thousand, but I mean, I mean, they green screen that. Yeah, they'll yeah, put like a, but, but they'll put like a hundred people. Yeah, and they'll green screen the rest of them. But, um, but you're still like their budget is like twenty million an episode. Yeah, an yeah, episode. Yeah, did you mean like you're gonna compare Dirty Love to that? I'm like, I don't like. I have camera good enough for like YouTube yeah. I said but I don't have Hollywood no, cameras yeah. the pan in and, and the rails know, and, and the swing arm coming in like, and go, going out well, like, come on, like, you, me here? you know and so when people and so when people think of like oh you made a show good for you yeah. oh, or I get a lot of oh it's better than I thought it would be it's actually good uh, I get oh. so much of that I'm like oh it's actually good I'm like <laughs> well, I actually worked on it, so, you know, you know it kind of resumes. And I know some people, like, <laughs> don't mean to insult, no, but it yeah. isn't something a little bit. Like, when they're like, oh, that's actually good. And Are you expect like, me to uh, just create crap? Well, and I think people, like, I think so. I think that's what people think. So that they nice think try, independent. Girl, yeah, you know, I think like so. <laughs> I think people think independent and, you know, and was it I think everything that I hoped it would be? No, absolutely not. I had... There's I, nothing twenty million would have fixed. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, like with what, with you know, the money I had and and like what we could do with it. Yeah, I'm happy with yeah. what we did. Obviously, there's things that would have changed. You know, can't go back now. Yeah. Um, but I've learned so much. I grew as a person, as a producer, as a director, as a writer. I grew and I learned so much. And like I managed all these people. Um, yeah. And, and it was it was like a fantastic experience. I worked with amazing people and stuff. And yeah, money could have made it better for sure. Mm -hmm. More time, I would have been able to pay everybody in, which would have been more time and, yeah. and, and you know, things would have been better equipment or, you know, so 
I, there's a lot of things I could have, but I did what I could with what I had, and I'm so proud of what I did. And we have forty thousand views in total, nice. you know, like with all episodes together. So I'm, and that's only with our social media marketing. Yeah, that's not. That's not. Well, not billboards don't work anymore, the, the, but that's you know, not the big, big advertising. No terms. YouTube advertisements because I couldn't fund that anymore. You know, yeah. what I mean? like it, so yeah. it was just with. Word of mouth, mouth and, and, yeah. and oh, it's actually good. I'll send it to somebody yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Look, oh, listen to this. It's yeah. actually good. It's actually good. Yeah. So, but I was lucky because we had a lot of people who believed in it. Yeah. Um, a lot of local musicians who gave their songs, let us use it. Um, you know, and, and people who volunteered their time to create the music for you know, and and uh, or, or edit it and 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 film it and light it and you yeah. know so well, I think people, people just don't understand the involvement oh yeah like a five minute scene oh, yeah. that has four or five different camera pans yeah your the hours. editor is going to be a few hours oh, yeah. and then the actors are going to be a few hours yeah. and then the cameraman and then the, the okay let's try it again yeah. with this lighting and then yeah you know Oh, and like independent like filming too like you're you know we didn't have a lot of time to like storyboard everything because we're like well, we don't even know what location we're filming yeah, yeah, yeah. yet like we're still trying to get locations and what we had in mind wasn't going to be the location so now everything is kind of scrapped we have to like work on the go uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and hope for the best yeah, yeah. Stuff. so it was really playing with curveballs you're not uh, no that's it because you look like you said Game of Thrones earlier well when you're building yeah. one of those sets there's yeah. as much effort into that set as building yeah. a high rise oh yeah you know what I mean we're talking crane yeah. construction workers, electricians, plumbers. Exactly. You guys are like, is the house free? Can I use it? Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 100%. You know? and, and you can't blow out the front of the wall no. to pan out your exactly. camera. Exactly. You kind of have to deal with, okay, I, I'm, yeah. I'm up against the wall. Yeah. That's how we're going to have to do it. Yeah. And I was so like, you know, like my husband built, uh, he built me uh, a dolly, you know, like yeah. the, to have the camera move back smoothly and stuff. Yeah. So we're working with independent, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. indie filmmaking, like, you know, we've done so many weird things yeah. to create something. Yeah, so. Yeah. And you do what you can with what you have. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's actually good. Yeah. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually good. good. Actually pretty good. But, like, you know, for my first short film, uh, no, my second short film, Inara, um, the one we won at the film festival, it was just me and my cinematographer, and then my husband and my friend helping and uh, my daughter and ac another actor. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And like we're in the film festival, there was like 30 films. We're like number 28 and we're like, and we're watching all these films and like seeing all the credits rolling for these three minute films, like a million people working on this. And our film is like Mesa, Rami, JC, Eleanor, and then like the yeah. two, you know, and Peter, and that was it. And we're like, and then we won, so. <laughs> <laughs> you should have spread it over like a 30, well, 40 second span. One name, no, wait till and the And I put no on. dialogue in this film because we were fairly new. We didn't have like a sound person. Right. And we're like, I don't want to deal with this. We're just going to put music over this, you know? Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. And we still won, yeah. you know, with no dialogue. It's really play on emotions, the images, um, and the music yeah. that really tied it all together. And it made it very emotional. And, and like, and then the end to me, it's like, you don't need so many people on set to create something so beautiful. Yeah, right. You need to have talented people yeah. who know what they're doing, who know their work and, and what they're doing. That's what you need on set. And they're pros at it too, yeah. right? Because um, we all see the divas that you, oh, yeah. that you hear of. Yeah. But I can almost guarantee you going on the way mm -hmm. up, you can't be that diva. You got to no. open up and learn. And, oh, and I you know some people open. who are like, oh, I know how to do this. And I have no, then they don't. They yeah. don't. They don't deliver. And the thing is, it's not a resume you can lie on. No. Because we can see it. Oh, people try. <laughs> oh, people well, try. Well, you can see it. Yeah. So there's no use. Like, oh, no, I'm, I'm very good at a, I don't know, yeah. Norwegian accent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do it. Well, what the hell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but even like as crew, like, I just, I did this. And you're like, well, that's not really, yeah. you know. And yeah. a lot of it you can learn on the job, and which is why I, like, we had too many people learning on the set of, like, Dirty Love. Like, we were learning and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, when you just work with, like, super talented people, like, I know when I work with Rami, I know what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. He knows, like, I, I can tell him what I want, and I'm going to get it. Yeah. You know? And so and he and I work well together. Can, we communicate well together. We support each other properly. Like, and we just know how we work. I know what I'm getting from him. He knows what he's getting from me in terms of like organization and directing. Mm -hmm. And so we work well as a team. And so you have to find that in other people yeah. to understand like, you know, we know what they're, everyone knows their job and we know what to expect 
from them when they do it. Because it's a growth part too. Like you said, you all grew and, and oh yeah, everyone's together. growing together. Yeah. So as you're well, growing together, like if you have somebody that's on the pa- uh, on yeah. the panel or on the set that. Yeah. Has a lot of training. You can tell he's obviously yeah. like you know when you go play basketball mm. and the guy's head of way yeah. better than you. <laughs> yeah. You can tell. So you can tell yeah. this guy. Well, it's his best interest yeah. to make everybody else around better. Yeah. Because why would you want to be a great actor in a shitty film? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't you want to be a great actor with great actors in a yeah. good film? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. So so sharing that knowledge all across and, and yeah, helping each, each other. Cast, out. crew, yeah. everybody. Everyone should be encouraging other people so I'm huge on mentorship I like want to encourage that so it's probably huge as you go along too mm-hmm. that you know like you said you have your people you like to work with and you pick with and mm-hmm. stuff like that so these kind of not clicks but mm-hmm. is if you can you yeah. pick the same person to work Absolutely. with right so you, you build your your network so of you have your repertoire that you know. yeah because yeah, yeah. you know what you're getting from them yeah and I, I like I'm big on mentorship and, and I know people can learn on the job but they have to show that initiative yeah you know and the will and the open-mindedness yeah. to take the, the take the criticism and the ideas. that goes with everything right yes because I, I think like in business it, it's all learning yeah that's all it is mm-hmm. because whether you're dealing with mm-hmm. tree work like I do real mm-hmm. estate or yeah it, it's all the same thing first of all you get into it knowing nothing mm-hmm. so, yeah, well, so you yeah. gotta learn you, yeah. you gotta like, but this is everything. Learn. like you you know, you yeah. don't go into something knowing everything. Like, yeah. you, you learn. That one important first step, right? Yeah. Like you said, at 25, you came back. You said, that's enough. I got to do something. That mm-hmm. one important first step yeah. is what launched you mm-hmm. into at least a path of something uh, I you was enjoyed, thought, I was right? like 20 at that point. Like, 25, I was depressed until I was 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, what am I doing? I got to do something. <laughs> yeah. So follow your passion. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I can. I can't live without it, and I know that. Yeah. You know, I know that that I'm not made for the just regular nine to five job. Yeah. So I'm doing it, and it's it's supporting my passions currently. Yeah. Until yeah. I work my way out and I build myself up. So, yeah. um, but but I know I'm not made to just do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not who I am. I think a lot of people was. are meant to just do government work. You'd be surprised some people like their yeah, nine to five, yeah. and and they go home and they do you know their little hobbies and then everybody they is different, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's all it's all relative. Like I, I'm kind of a little, yeah. I'm like you. Like I have some free time. Yeah. I'm either gonna do something really stupid and bad with it, <laughs> or I might as well do something <laughs> good and find yeah. something to do. Yeah. Because I can't sit still, it gets dangerous. I just, well, I'm just a creative person, and I've always been. I mean, you know, like I've been in every single yeah. play at school or every talent show. It was always, you know, yeah, something that I I wanted to do, and I was never gonna settle for anything less. Yeah, yeah. And I can't convince myself to. Yeah. I've tried to and be like I can do this. I just couldn't. No, <laughs> I right. just couldn't see other people moving on and succeeding, whatever. And I'm like. Like this, this is what I want to do. What am I doing? Yeah, you know. If you're not chasing what you want to do, yeah. then you're just slowly waiting to the end. Yeah, but <laughs> like you know, for a long time, like you know, Jason and I, like before we had kids, and I was other than doing the acting classes, wasn't doing anything else because we weren't making that much money. And like, so it's like we go to work, we come home, we have dinner together, we watch TV, we go to bed. Next, yeah. same thing next day, same thing next day. We weren't doing anything, mm-hmm. and now like that we have kids. Now our hobbies are like. So we have, you know, I have my, my filmmaking, my acting, and, and my writing, all this stuff, and my film festivals, and JC has his, like, uh, his games and his war, like, his tabletop games and stuff like that, so we have to manage all that, but we weren't doing that before. Yeah, yeah. And now that we have kids, we're like, yes, we need to do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's so true, too, yeah. because that, that momentum just gets killed, eh? and yeah. I, I think it's, I think we're, we're, we're badly prepared for real life, honestly, because yeah. I think we're portrayed this mm-hmm. life of adventure. Mm-hmm which it should be but then we go through school and mm-hmm. being told to get a job and a pension yeah and then you yeah. get that and you're like well where's this adventure i've been promised but the worst part is that like people are like you have to you know like to stay because you have a really good pension like what if i don't make it to my pension mm-hmm. but your kids yeah. will get it that's not the point of living my life no. That's you know, right. and That's I've had right. enough people be like, oh, no, you need your pension. You should stay in the government. Do you know how hard I have to work to have a pension? I'm like, you have, like, million-dollar businesses. Like, yeah. don't come and talk to me about pension. Yeah. Like, you're you're golden. Like, I, you know, yes, pension is great. And, you know, obviously I want to save for my retirement and stuff. But yeah. I'm not living my life for pension because yeah. I may not make it. And in all, I find, in all, in the grand scheme of things, yeah. if I can find something 
that pays me, yeah. helps me thrive with my passion, yeah. that I don't have to retire from. No. That's even well, worth that's more than a pension. Well, that's it, right? Because a pension, you have to retire. Yeah. What if I don't want to? Yeah. What if I love what I do? I have. I don't see a point of going anywhere. Yeah. I don't see a point in stopping these podcasts. I don't see a point in stopping going to the gym. Yeah. I don't see a point of stopping any of this. Yeah. So if you can get paid so, for that, so just what do am it. I? Yeah. Why am I aiming for a pension to stop something I hate? Yeah. How about I just do something I love? Yes. All exactly. The time? Yes. That makes you sense. Know? See? Yeah, yeah. They put it in your head that like you have to yeah go to work, have kids, yeah. get your pension, retire, then travel. Yeah. What if you don't make it? Yeah. There's enough people that at our age, their parents have not made it. No, my my Roxanne, her mother yeah. died at 54. You know, like that's right before retiring. Right before retiring. You know. And like, how many people do you know that retired in within a year or two? Oh, so many in the government. Yeah. You always, especially executives, you get you get emails like ah, two years after their title. Oh, this person passed away. This person passed away, and you're like, what the passion's heck? gone. Like they've been working so hard, yeah. so busy, so busy, so busy, and then they're like retired and like, what am I doing with my life? And, and then their body just gives up. Right. I guess I don't know. I think it's a double whammy. It's they've been working really hard, being really busy, and the mind doesn't yeah. understand why. Because there's there, there's been no focus for etern- for internal happiness yeah. with what they've been doing. They've been doing it because yeah, right. So then you get to the end, you retire, and then now the adrenaline and the stress is gone. Because right. A good thing about like when, when we look at stress, mm. right? <clears throat> stress is designed to help us survive. Mm. Lion chases you. High levels of stress, <laughs> adrenaline. You're gonna run away. Yeah. If you survive, adrenaline yeah. lowers, gets burned out through the system, mm-hmm. you're fine. Mm-hmm. Stress is meant to have spikes and valleys, mm-hmm. spikes and valleys. Yeah. But the way we live our life right now is instead of having a spike in a valley, we have a constant little pressure of yeah. stress this entire life. Yeah. So that executive had 30 years of a constant little stress, yeah. then the stress stopped. It's kind of like closing a light. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's so true. Not, this stress was not yeah. good. Yeah but it was necessary for him. Yeah. But because, I find, because you didn't find a passion to turn yeah. that in, over into, yeah. or because you didn't like what you did here and that yeah. level of stress was always there, mm-hmm. then I think the drastic change at retirement yeah. could be the cause of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just how I think about I, I, it. Yeah, I totally believe that. There's, there's yeah. hormones, there, yeah. there's chemicals being released when yeah. you're stressed, there's all this. And it's meant to have a high dose, mm. low dose, evacuate. Yeah. And now we have a constant low pressure dose in because our entire of, life. Yeah, because of the North American way of living. Yeah. It's constant, like go, 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 go. And I think it's mostly self inflicted too. Yeah, well, society, I think, does it, though. Yeah. But like if, you know, in a, in a certain way, because my house is not fully renovated, it's not yeah. brand new. I, I go see some people's houses that are my age mm-hmm. that their house is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But you talk to them about their financial problems, it's like, wouldn't you want to relieve the stress a little more than you like your crown molding? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, there's a lot of pressures about uh, pleasing the living. Joneses. Yeah. yeah that I think have transferred into uh, the way we're living yeah. and adding this little mm. curve of stress that we don't need to live with, really. Yeah, 100%. Social media is not helping. Nope. Everybody's in the eye. Well, everyone is like <laughs> trying to, they'll spend all their money and be like, look at me, look at me, I'm on this boat, I'm on this yacht, yeah. look at me, and you're like, you're in like crazy amounts of debt. Show, show the show. good, show the good, yeah. show the but good. but don't show the bad. But don't show the bad. Hey, I'm depressed today. No, yeah, I don't exactly. See that. Oh, my credit card bill just came in. Shouldn't have bought the yacht. Yeah, you know? well, you know, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, man. You don't see it's so hard part. to find, like, that balance, yeah. uh, you know. But, you know, like, Europe yeah. doesn't live like this. Like, they live on, like, their own pace of things, yeah. you know. Yeah. You don't you don't hear everybody, like, working a 9 to 5. Like, here, it's like, you got to work in the 9 to 5 job. you got to yeah. get that pension. you got to get that, like, yeah. what are you living? Yeah. What are you living? You know. Should be every day. <laughs> yeah, but, like, you're not, when are you yeah. really living? Yeah, yeah your passion, your life, like, I, you know, I'm not waiting for retirement to live my life. Well, no. No. It's, it's, it's And you're not letting society dictate what you should be doing. I'm trying not to. Because <laughs> the, our society would dictate, you got a government job, what are you doing, girl? Oh, and I've heard Like, go do your theater on the weekend there, but yeah. keep your job, what oh, are yeah. you doing? when you hear it as a hobby. Oh, yeah. you're, oh, it's a hobby. You're yeah. like, no, it's not a hobby. It's a passion. You yeah. know? Yeah. A lot oh, yeah. of people make a hobby their life. Oh, yeah, but people tell me that I'm stupid if I leave the government. And I'm, I'm not planning to leave the government until, until, you're I, until I know what I'm doing. I wish you leave the government. I wish you leave <laughs> in such a yes. rush. 
like tomorrow. Oh, God. Like tomorrow, you get a call and you go, I can't go in. Yeah. I, I gotta go to I gotta go to LA. I'm going to LA. I'm gonna make my. <laughs> yeah. I hope One tomorrow day. you leave. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, it's it's you know, and it's fine because like I still have fears, you know, because I'm like okay, like uh, you know, I I still have to. You know, I have my kids. I can't just pick up and leave to LA. I had all these plans, and I'm scared to, you know, leave my kids for a week because I'm not yeah. there yet. You know, like yeah, all these yeah. plays in the back of my mind. I'm like, no, but I still have to go. I still have to pursue and work and, yeah, yeah. and stuff. So it's it's hard. Yeah. But I'm still trying to get over these fears. Of, uh, but I think that's what makes a good story. If it was easy, you know, everyone uh, would be doing it. Everyone would be doing it. You wouldn't be sitting in that chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like. You have someone else here. Instead the of me. fact that it's hard yeah. and that perseverance is demanded yeah. is inspiring, and I think that's what's needed in this world, and I think that's what people don't see enough of. Yeah. So that's why I invited you here today. <laughs> well, thank you. With that being said, I think it's getting late. Okay. The sun has been down for a while, but that doesn't matter. We're in Canada, so it's pretty much always down. Um, uh, Canada in the winter. No winter. <laughs> So we'll we'll leave you with that. Okay. It was great. I think that was uh, it, great right? time. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Before we go, where can we see you? Where can we reach? Okay. You? So you can see me on Instagram, uh, Miss underscore Mesa. That's on Instagram. Uh, Mesa Puri on Facebook, uh, YouTube. You can see Dirty Love. So Dirty Love series on YouTube, on Instagram as well, Facebook. It's all there. Um, and that's it. Awesome. Now, yeah. Thanks for coming out. Thank we'll put those at me. the bottom, okay, and yes. uh, we'll have you again. Oh my god! It was great. <laughs> my next show after. Your next show. <laughs> my next show.